Hey, 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 welcome back to Trek on the Tube. It's Star Wars time. That's right, The Mandalorian, Season 2, Episode 4, Chapter 12, The Siege. Let's talk about it. It was so much fun. I'm having so much fun watching this show. And the intrigue, the setup, the mystery, ah, it's all so good. Now, I know all my Mandalorian reviews are pretty short, and yes, it's to some certain extent because all of the episodes of the show aren't that long, and all of the stories are pretty straightforward, but it's also because I've got nothing but compliments. Visually, the show is stunning, from the makeup and alien designs we saw in the city, to the tech we saw and the sets we went to where the action took place, and it's not just the quality of the visual effects or prop builds, it's also the way they're captured on screen. These kind of cloud shots are spectacular to look at, and all of these panels feel very much like those original films. The acting is also solid, the dialogue also works, and the comedy as well. I mean, let's be honest, the asset is... Useless. Baby Yoda's cute, but he, he doesn't do much. He's, he's almost not even a character, just the MacGuffin of the show. So using him for comedy is a good move. He's eating these space macaroons that he stole from another kid. He's throwing up. Mando has him trying to fix the ship. Why? <laughs> why, would, would you, why would you even try that? It's fun, though. Also, this guy, Blue uh, Waterman, Fat Flotter, you know, from Star Trek Voyager. He was great, too. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. This was probably one of my favorite episodes of the season. Not only did it fill in some of the blanks as to what happened on this planet and what happened to some of the characters from season one, but it also set up plenty of things for the rest of this new season and the show in general. From what I understand, Gideon is trying to basically manufacture a Sith or make himself as powerful as other Jedi or Sith have been in the past, because, yeah, they're talking about an M count, which I assume is a midichlorian count. We're also hearing about blood transfusions, which were obviously being taken from our precious little baby here. It's all so sinister and so intriguing. The mystery of it all is being really well set up and progressively paid off. You know what? I, I like the idea, be because this show takes place after the original trilogy, but before the sequel trilogy, so this is after the fall of the Empire, but before the rise of the First Order, right? Okay, so I like the idea that on the outer rims of the galaxy, some of these Empire fanatics are still at it, trying to rebuild, regroup, and reconquer the galaxy. In the first season, I thought, eh, these guys are just operating as some sort of gang, but no, this Moff Gideon dude seems pretty legit, like somehow this whole plotline will eventually lead into those sequel movies. I don't know anything about the, the Star Wars Extended Universe, we've been over that, but God, would it be so cool if they managed to find a way to get Snoke in here somehow. See, I really liked Supreme Leader Snoke, and I was really bummed out when he got, you know, basically kicked out of the story. Anyways, I would love it if Moff Gideon, I don't know, kidnapped a kid, genetically engineered him with midichlorian-infused blood, among other things, and then we got this young adult, Snoke, that eventually would grow up into the Snoke that we meet in the films. It, I don't know, it would add depth to the character and just give him some more screen time. It's this specific shot that's making me say all this, by the way. This gave me Snoke vibes so bad. Moving on, because this is not a Theorycraft channel. Yes, the episode explored elements of the past and introduced intrigue for the future, but the story itself, the elements of the present, these two people trying to protect the planet, help it prosper, they want to make it a trade hub in the sector, that was all really nice. I enjoyed the time spent in the city, in the school, and then of course, the action scenes were so good. Those bikes, that truck, I was having a great time. Congratulations to all involved, seriously. I do want to just add that I feel like these bikers were 100% CG, and I, I, I kind of came to that conclusion the first time I watched it, and then taking these screenshots, I don't know, I feel like they were 100% CG. The way some of their movements were, I don't know, I don't know what you guys think. And so we come to the end of yet another short review. The fact I don't have any Easter eggs to talk about cuts the runtime by a lot, admittedly, but yeah, great episode. Pumped about the show. The episodes are pretty short, and just one video ago I was saying I'd love to get longer ones, but I don't know. Maybe the fact each episode leaves me wanting just that much more is part of the magic. Anyway, The Mandalorian is a show where the two main characters are a puppet and a helmet, so there are no human faces, and yet I'm, I'm so attached to both of them, the, the, that, that unlikely duo that they form. Alright, 
That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video with all your Star Wars friends. Buy yourself a Star Trek shirt or get a Star Trek shirt for your Star Wars friends just to, <laughs> just to annoy them. Uh, thank you to all the patrons and as usual, live long and prosper. <laughs>